Hello everyone, uh, it's Justin here. Bernhard uh, is pre busy preparing uh, for a trip to the UK and has asked me to record a video uh, just to help him out. Today we'll be discussing the early access game Warno uh, from Eugen Systems, uh, kind of updating the initial impressions video from back when the game had just entered early access. Uh, for those unfamiliar, Warno is a Cold War real-time tactics game that will eventually also include a turn-based operational level campaign as well. Uh, that has real-time battles mixed in. Um, well, he can't join us for the recording. Bernhard wanted me to let you all know that he also enjoys Warno. Um, but instead, we have a Bernhard substitute. His name is Joe Fonseca. Uh, welcome, Joe. <laughs> Hello. Uh, some of you may remember uh, that Joe has appeared on the channel before. Uh, he ha is a history PhD candidate, a gamer, and a war gamer. And I think he'll offer a different perspective from myself on Warno. Uh, I'm a grizzled Eugen Games veteran with well over 1,200 hours in all the various war game and Steel Division games, uh, and now Warno. Uh, Joe knows his computer and tabletop war games, but uh, he's a relative outsider to Eugen Games specifically. Uh, so with that, I guess we'll just jump straight into it. Um, now, Joe, what are your feelings on the Eugen Games you have played? Because uh, you've played a couple of them. Uh, and where does Warno fit into that for you? Yeah, so I've played a lot of war games. Most of them are, you know, the traditional classic groggy war games of uh, very, very slow turn-based games or whatever, you know, a lot of planning. And then you got me to get my feet wet with, I think it was War Game Red Dragon a few years ago. Yeah. And oh boy, that was a completely different can of worms to what I'm used to. <laughs> um <laughs> It's, I didn't hate it, <laughs> but it definitely wasn't my type of game, because uh, at least with a Red Dragon, it required a lot of unit knowledge, a lot of um, fast thinking and fast um, actions to get units on the table and then get them doing what you wanted them to, um, and I got obliterated, like every time I played. So that one didn't really sit with me. Um, then we got... You eventually got me to try again with um, Steel Division 2. I'm pretty sure, right? Yeah. 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 That one I liked a bit more, because that one took a lot of the things that uh, made it difficult for me to get into, like to, to breach that terrifying shell of the Eugen games in Red Dragon. Because, A, I, I knew... I guess it helps. I knew... World War II um, hardware better than Cold War and modern hardware from Red Dragon. But also there was a lot of, like, you know, uh, hand-holding that <laughs> Steel Division Two does that uh, Red Dragon just didn't. Like, um, there's pre-built orders you can give. You can give orders as they're coming on the table. You can do a lot of things to you to just make it a bit more playable. And then Warno... I was interested in, because when I heard it was coming out, I thought, hey, it's Cold War, that's fascinating, and it's modern, so hopefully it'll have some things to help me, uh, you know, get over my grandpa reflexes trying to play a game that requires fast action, fast clicking. And it does. So, you know, I think I like it the best. I still like Steel Division 2, but I do think I like Warno the most of the Eugene games I played but they still do stress the crap out of me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my my general thoughts on Warno are, so far, I like it a lot. It's probably my... I, I can, like, just... With my feel, again, I have over 1,200 hours in, in War... You're going you're gonna to find few people that know War Game better than me and steel division and just how the eugen puts their games together there are going to be people that know more but i know i'm definitely in that top percentage um warno feels fantastic because for me one of the things that has always bothered me about the old war games like red dragon and older is the i one of the biggest gaming pet peeves i have is um like tedious micro just for the sake of it or just being fiddly or janky um and i know as someone who plays a lot of war games that's like half your life um <laughs> jank. but um but it, when it jank really is paired with um 
paused gameplay, like totally <laughs> turn based, then it's just another thing you got to get. Like, I, I mean, half the games I play, I have to sit down with a, like a paper manual and read it before I start enjoying it. Right. Mm-hmm. I feel like the Eugen games require that level of knowledge and that level of expertise, but don't let me sit down with a book or sit down with a turn <laughs> to figure it out. <laughs> um yeah and i'm very so as much as i love the eugen games uh i am also i guess for the audience far more along the joe line of of (laughs) enjoying my games i like games that are slower i don't mind real time as long as it's slow um and obviously war game is very much the antithesis of that on the on the surface of it for people who haven't played war game even though it has the appearances of a war game, unsurprisingly, um, the pace of the game is really fast. It It's very APM intensive actions per minute. There's a lot of clicking. There's a lot of use of hotkeys. Units move around really quickly. Things can go bad, with it, particularly in war game Red Dragon. If you have a disastrous opener, like so you kind of put your units down and then you drive them down the road or use helicopters or whatever to put them in a place... There's a lot of micro and tedium that comes with a, a war game, Red Dragon opener or older. Um, and if you screw that up, like, I mean, the one time I, I went all out in a 1v1 against Joe just to see how he'd do, I, 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 I had crushed Joe within about the first 30 seconds of the match, literally. Oh, yeah. Um, it's insane. Like, which, you were trying to teach me how to do this. When we're playing online, you're like you're you're giving me all the instructions of like, all right, here here's a lot of the uh, openings that people like to play. Here's a lot of the counters to those openings. Here's what you have to do with your first, you know, here's your points for the first couple minutes of the game. You got to make sure you're controlling your objectives. You're you're pushing the other objectives. You're you know not letting points float. So when the the timer ticks over and points come back for you to spend, you got to make sure you're spending them, spending them right, and getting those guys out and doing the right thing. It kills me. <laughs> <laughs> And I guess where Warno fits in in this is that they add a lot of the quality of life that made Steel Division 2 far... Like, I, I enjoy playing Steel Division 2 more than I enjoy playing War Game Red Dragon now, because, like, you've got a line of sight tool, so you can see what your units can see. Oh my god, you can yes, issue, line of sight tool. The, probably the biggest thing is you can issue orders to your units before the game starts. So, again, going back to that fran- like the frantic, overwhelming APM nightmare that is a war game opener that is removed in warno and in the steel division where you can issue orders ahead of time so in other words people like grandpas like joe or i mm-hmm. we can think out where we want our units where we want them to unload what we want them to do without all the frantic clicking yeah. um remember we're playing a huge. sorry a defensive game and we had like a few minutes to set up and I was able to build my, my favorite little, like, three-tier defense in depth, and they just broke against me. And that was the first time I really felt like I was doing well in a game of, like, a Warno- um a Eugen game, and that was still Division 2. And that's because I had five minutes to literally prepare and give everyone orders and let them do it. <laughs> <laughs> um, which is why I think both of us, we, we both like Warno and also Steel Division as well more than war game as much as like war game has a special place in my heart and i have by far the most hours in the three war game games um i think i think going forward i'll probably surpass that play time in warno um and another big part of that is the ai which i think we'll talk about a little later but i think i want to dig into a little bit more because we brought it up is micromanagement and war games um particularly related to like warno versus red dragon but also there are other games that we can maybe bring into this to have this discussion because this is like a it's outside of war games as well it's an rts uh rtt discussion and debate that goes on online where you have people that are really they really like faster pace they like high apm requirements um that kind of thing so that you know i guess to pick a traditional game it'd be a starcraft type of game and then there are people like Joe or I, who like it slower, so we can think, and we don't have to click as much. Um, and I wonder, because sometimes they can get into warring camps. Um, I've seen a little bit of it come up on the Warno Discord, uh, which I follow quite closely, where some of the 
quality of life choices that Eugen has made with Warno have made some parts of the community mad because they are they view it as quote unquote dumbing it down, which I don't. I think both um, myself and you disagree with strongly. Yeah, see, that's the thing because like I put maybe five or six hours into War Game Red Dragon because I just bounced so hard off of that that required amount of you know re reflexes and with Steel Division and now with Warno I have no problem putting more and more time into it I've already put let me if I could look at like 10 hours into Warno or something like that and you know I don't get a chance to play games as much as I'd like to but that the fact that there are things that help me learn the game and play the game like giving people orders as they come on and trusting that the AI is competent enough to just do it. <laughs> At least, you know, they're not going to do it perfectly, but they're going to do it. Means I can actually, you know, coordinate myself without having to be rushing around and constantly clicking things. The fact that there's a line of sight tool, so I can hover my mouse over an area, hit a button, see what they can see, and think, okay, I can place the guy there on defense and he'll be fine. Like, all of that stuff is just so nice when it comes to getting over the... I don't know, dozens or hundreds of hours you need to play even remotely competitively with some of these games. Like, I know I'll never be a StarCraft, you know, pro player or anything, and I don't want to be, but I'd like to be able to play, you know, Warno online and not feel like I'm getting trounced because I just haven't trained my reflexes or, or you know, figured out every single keybind on this game. Yeah, and I'm very much along that track where when they, when they add quality of life, like, orders before a battle um it takes away a skill a video game skill of apm because it is an actual skill to do a proper war game it's probably the hardest part of a war game red dragon match is is not completely screwing up the opener because it's so apm intensive but instead they're substituting like your unit composition at the beginning and out thinking your opponent um and i think that carries through when you reduce things like apm requirements you increase the uh, the skill skill gap in other areas, particularly just literally just understanding the units better and uh, thinking ahead of time, like what you need, which is always my favorite uh, part of like playing any of these kinds of um, real time strategy, real time tactics games. Is I like ones that really reward you for thinking a long time ahead and mm. like positioning things appropriately rather than ones that are just ultra fast paced and lots and lots of APM. And I'm not going to, you know, like dunk on games like that and say they're, they're for dumb people. It's just, a, it's a very different type of game. Um, yeah. If, if people can do both, right? Sorry. Yeah. If they can like, if they can do APM and do that kind of planning, then, you know, great, good, good for them. But that's such a small subset of players. I think that yeah. reducing that requirement, that, that baseline to be able to, and then, you know, if they're that good, then they're going to win. Great. Good for them. They're going to be awesome at the game. But having that be the floor <laughs> for getting into the yeah. game just makes it impossible for a lot of people. If it's just like, oh, that guy was top tier. He could plan, he could do all this stuff, and he could click fast. You know, like, good for him. <laughs> <laughs> and that's that's one thing that I think made Wargame really difficult to get into. Um, like, even setting aside just how overwhelming the deck building and all the stats and everything are um it's really demoralizing when you get into a game and you are just absolutely destroyed within within less than a minute and it's like you have mm -hmm. no chance to to even gain your footing before you're just trashed um which i think led a lot of people to just not like i know almost every friend i have ever tried to get into war game red dragon they just they could not they were gone like within maybe an hour or two because it was just too much yeah. um and i'm hoping with warno and i know for a fact with steel division it's it's more approachable um with some of the design choices they've made uh people can disagree with with some aspects of it but i think overall it's it's a huge net game um on the quality of life side of things um mm -hmm. as far as i guess we should talk about the state of the game because it is early access um and it's been roughly six months, I think, since we recorded the initial impressions video and it's been released. Um, as far as, like, bugs go, there's still quite a few bugs in the game. Um, they're patching gradually, but uh, there's still 
things like that. Balance is still a mess. Um, right now, it is definitely slanted primarily toward NATO, which is something that is un not really surprising for people who are familiar with Eugen games. Because, I mean, for example, War Game Air Land Battle, it's late game, even like at the um, when the game is fully mature and they were going to stop uh, patching and all of that, the meta was overwhelmingly NATO. Like, if you watched competitive, it was almost exclusively mixed NATO versus mixed NATO. There was almost no pact, um, no national decks. Red Dragon by late life, it was a little bit more balanced, but um, right now with Warno, definitely NATO is stronger at the moment. Um, that, I'm sure that will change ebb and flow. We're still early yet, but that's kind of where the balance is at. Things like tanks and everything haven't been comprehensively rebalanced yet, though developers have said uh, very recently, like last couple of days with when we were recording this, they're going to be reintroducing auto loaders as a mechanic, uh, which was a mechanic in War, uh, War Game Red Dragon um, that was patched into War Game Red Dragon, actually. It wasn't originally in it. Um, and then also they are going to be comprehensively rebalancing prices and uh, unstandardizing tank rate of fire, because right now in Warno, every single tank fires at 10 rounds per minute. They're going to adjust that so they're not all the same anymore. Um, so that'll be good. Uh, the game's development, like, kind of froze for about a month and a half. Not, like, literally what they were working on, but it's from the perspective of players. They were running into issues with, I guess, towed weapons or something. Um, and it was quite a drought. I think the population did drop off significantly because there wasn't that much content and there was no visible development going on, um, which wasn't great. Although now that that has been patched in, things are moving quite a bit quicker right now. And I've noticed... Uh, I follow the Discord quite closely. I don't think you do, Joe, but... No, I'm not on that um, Discord. <laughs> yeah. But developer interaction within the last couple weeks has been noticeably way better uh which is good they're pulling on features and they are interacting with people's ideas and stuff which they weren't really doing for about a month and a half before that um in this kind of dark time when they were doing something <laughs> <laughs> but it, it feels a lot better on the discord right now i hope that keeps up um because i think it's very healthy for the community and it's healthy for the game uh, that there's this interaction between people developing the game and the people playing it. And a lot of the features and ideas that they're talking about, I think, are good ideas. Some of the like criticisms I have of Warno is that they were almost too faithful to Wargame in some areas, and they kind of backpedaled on, I think, what were really good mechanics from Steel Division, um, particularly around infantry and also number of weapon slots. Because um, in Steel Division, they went to four weapon slots for infantry, then they took that back down to three for Warno, because that's the same as War Game. But I feel like four weapon slots for infantry would be nice in Warno, and also infantry mechanics generally, like pinning and stuff. Um, I don't know how you feel about the. You've played a little bit of Steel Division versus Warno. How do you feel about the infantry combat between those two? Yeah, I, I'm definitely felt something was off. When I started playing Warno, because I, I liked playing infantry heavy stuff in in um, Steel Division, and you, you could tell that there was a little bit missing there. I didn't hate it. I mean, I thought it still did fine. It just also felt like it was very um, like I was playing a lot more. I don't know, a couple months ago when it was like I, it's been a little bit since I played, so I'm not sure about the latest patches. But the infantry felt very um, squishy. Like if you if you got them in the wrong place, they were just eradicated. And I know in Steel Division, weapons are a little bit less lethal because you're dealing with 40s technology instead of 90s or 80s, right? But it still did feel like infantry were just... They weren't as effective, and they were just getting vaporized. But I'm pretty sure they're, they're fixing... You, you said they were fixing that, right? They're a little bit more hardy. They get a little bit more usable. Yeah, they, they, have. Have, they have slowed down... Um, or, sorry, no. It's increased time to kill um, <laughs> in infantry combat. Um, and they are apparently going to do it even more. Um, they've been talking about... In fact, they've actually been talking not just about touching stats, but potentially bringing over some of the mechanics of infantry combat in Steel Division. Mm. 
which I think would be fantastic because I'm a huge fan of how infantry works in Steel Division. Right now, one of the, the criticisms of the Steel Division system is uh, there's like a fallback button. So once your infantry gets pinned, you can hit the fallback button and they run away. And it, apparently that ability is too strong. Like it comes with some kind of um, damage reduction that's just too powerful. Um, and I've seen some people using that as an argument to not bring any of those mechanics over to Warno, which I feel is pretty thin because really ultimately the fallback being too strong in Steel Division, that's like a stat change that Eugen could just make for balance reasons. It's not something baked into the core mechanic yeah. um so if they do end up bringing something like that over and adjusting it i think it would be a, a improvement over infantry combat from um war game like yeah making them more survivable makes sense to me because i feel like the thing that i mean and i know it's a hard point of comparison but i play a lot of combat mission <laughs> and having uh infantry in even like a moderately built up area they can just wreak untold havoc on vehicles that aren't properly supported, right? But I feel like in Warno, if a tank just you know, or a few tanks be like, oh, there's infantry over there, they'll just blow the crap out of it and they're gone. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, okay, well, I wasn't expecting that. It, it doesn't help that building destruction in Warno, um, which was never in war game. so in war game, you would just stick unit uh, infantry in city blocks, and they would get, you know, protection from the buildings and concealment and they could fire out of them and you couldn't like destroy the block but now you can destroy the buildings in warno and i i think that's something that's probably not going to go away but it does i think take away some of the how scary an urban environment can be because it really you just level the whole thing with artillery and then you just drive through it yeah yeah that means my my new tactic in uh, warno is is that like Oh, there's a there's a city I need to take. Let's just hit it with literally everything until there's no city left. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I think it's it's uh, it was a misguided mechanic, I think, and I don't know if they can get rid of it or somehow make it better. I mean, they have improved it. Like it was bugged initially, where ruins were you could see out of them, but you couldn't see into them, and it was weird. Now they just act <laughs> as like just generic heavy cover, but it's kind of fiddly. It doesn't work as nicely as when you can just garrison units in them. Yeah, if um, they improve some of the stuff like the time to kill and give a retreat function into some more of those mechanics where the infantry aren't going to be sitting ducks and then slaughtered, then I feel like that's more viable. But again, I'm also just not a pro player, right? So I could not use my infantry to the best of their ability in either game. <laughs> but I feel like uh, in Steel Division, I had more control and could react to what was happening to my infantry, where in Warno, I feel like it's if if they're caught out, like, oh, they're just dead. <laughs> like, done again, you know? Yeah, I think that's a fair impression, because right now in Warno, particularly since Warno's infantry combat is very stun-dependent, um, so they run into something that's a problem. They get instantly stunned, which means you can't move them, and then they die. Yes, um, that's the feeling. Like. <laughs> in Steel Division, when you run into a bad situation, unless it's really, really bad, you, sh you can try to get yourself out of it, um, which gives the player that agency, uh, which I think is good for the infantry combat, because right now, even with the changes they've made that are in a positive direction for Warno, infantry combat is very much like you have more infantry or the right type of hard counter infantry, and they just wipe out the other side, and then whoever runs that infantry first is in trouble, um, which isn't the best. Um, it's it's actually not that dissimilar to how infantry worked in war game because war game infantry mechanics were very simple. Um, but... I'd like to see some of the improvement brought over from Steel Division. I guess another thing we can discuss that's a diff or that's caused some controversy with Warno is the deck building. So I guess for people who don't know, in War Game and now Warno and in Steel Division, you not only do you tactically use your units and bring in units, but you you choose what units you are going to bring before you even start a game. Um, so there's like an entire other aspect to the game that's not at, uh, not present in a lot of other RTS games, RTTs. Um, and they made the big change that they made from War Game to Steel Division and now Warno is that in War Game it was a national level deck building system. You had access to all of the nation's units um, within one deck and then you could specialize to do certain things. But you, fundamentally you had access to all American units if you chose an American deck. 
um, with Steel Division and now Warno, they are battle group or division specific. So you have a tighter pool of units in any deck you want to build uh, just up front. There's still room to customize, but it's more locked down to division battle group specific units. Um, do you have really an opinion on that, Joe, as a, a relative outsider? I mean, I I like the idea of having specific divisions or battle groups because you know if you're going to have a more focused conflict like this one here being, you know, uh, the hypothetical attack through Germany in Cold War, right? You're, you're, I guess it's easier to just have here is the Soviet deck, you know, Soviet Russian deck or whatever. Here's the East German deck, but I like that you're able to see a bit more customization and therefore specialization in different divisions. So if I'm thinking I want to play, you know, an infantry heavy deck, then I can pick an infantry division or infantry battle group or something like that. And if I want to do a um, a tank heavy one, there's the tank ones. And if I want to do something funky like in Steel Division, you can do like, oh, here's the um, the Polish Home Army group, right? And you're going to have a whole different set of stuff to play with. And I keep, I feel, I feel like that just keeps it interesting. And I know you could probably do that with the national decks, but it would be, I think it would require a lot more knowledge and work to make it enjoyable for the average player. So having these kind of guide rails to say, hey, you want to play this kind of thing? Here's this division, here's this battle group. Go, go nuts. It works for me. But I'm not opposed to it. I, I'm very much along those lines. This is a controversial thing there's a lot of people particularly war game people who really don't like the battle group system they want access to all the units on a nation nation level like in war game i personally find the battle group system a lot better um just because yeah like that was a good way of putting it the guardrails and really like once there's more divisions in the game i think some of the initial complaints i think were just it's early access you only had access to you know maybe two or like four battle groups yeah. and you're like well where's the variety it's like well because the game's not done yet uh, um with steel division two i mean they're up to like oh god I, I think there's like 70 something or more battle groups in the game you get your variety there eventually but i think that's yeah, part exactly. of the thing is like the people who Okay, I'm not, I'm, not everybody, but part of that group of people that want that full, you know, variety, that full choice, that's like, to me, it reminds me of the people I encounter with tabletop wargaming, who the the joy in the game for them is finding unusual synergies, or finding things that work with other things that maybe won't be entirely obvious to create a very powerful game force. And if you just have a pool of, like, here's every U.S. vehicle and unit that we can think of go nuts making things, then, yeah, those kind of people who have a lot of fun doing that, like, the, who really enjoy the deck building, the list construction, uh, you know, to use, like, a Warhammer term, <laughs> part of the game, they'll enjoy that. And then they'll take that online, and then they get to see what their construction does against other people who presumably are playing the same way, and that's a fun game for them. But I think that subset of people is not representative of the vast majority of people who want to play a game like this that they see as a real-time tactics with deck building elements cold war you know rts basically mm -hmm. so they're, they're going to see if the developers can put these guardrails on unit construction then they are you know controlling the extent to which individuals can take the tools at their disposal to make game-breaking synergies or insanely good synergies or you know hyper-competitive synergies. And I like that because it, it means I don't need to spend another six years doing a PhD in Warno to play it. <laughs> yeah, and I think that's an entirely fair point. Like, I can see, like, as someone who played an awful lot of deck game, as we'd call it, um, staring at your deck and like constantly swapping things out, um, it, it's something that I I really enjoy uh, in War Game and in Steel Division and now in Warno. In, in Warno, there's one of the things that they did with the battle groups in Warno is that some of the 
ways of differentiating them that they introduced with Steel Division, they removed for Warno. So they don't have a phase system like in Steel Division where you can bring in you know, different numbers of units at different stages of a battle. They got rid of that. You can bring in everything right from the start, uh, like War Game. And they also got rid of certain things like number of vehicles. Uh, they try to limit it by cards, but then in uh, Steel Division 2, they had a card limit and then also a limit on like various transport vehicles and stuff. So you could have maybe only 12, I don't know, half tracks uh, in a division. And you had to be careful like what you wanted to bring those uh, in those half tracks. They've gotten rid of some of that complexity, which I think in a way is a bit misguided because what it ends up doing is they're trying to retain as much freedom of the national level deck building of war game but they're restricting it to a battle group system and what it creates is there isn't that much variety in how you build your battle groups in warno right now um which i think is a it's a reasonable criticism some of the more recent ones though i, f I find and with the, the way the balance has changed already we're getting into a, a, a point where I'm starting to make hard choices about what I do and what I want to bring, uh, which I think is a sign of good game design. Like in initially with the balance and everything, like they were kind of just right answers. <laughs> um, now I feel there's a lot more variety. And that's a, that's a criticism I have of the old nation deck building system is that yes, you had access to all these units, but there was, when you actually thin down the roster to what you, what was actually viable, it was way, way less than than the 1,400 or whatever units they had in Wargame. Um, there were just a lot of noob traps and just units that are just not used. Um, and I, I'm not going to say like one side is right or, or not, but I think both of us are kind of in alignment on the, the battle group side of things, which might be slightly controversial, but whatever. <laughs> Um, it just the way you're saying here it just sounds so much like the competitive Warhammer scene. Like I play a lot of tabletop games. Like I play a lot of uh, Age of Sigmar and, and Warhammer and whatnot. And that what you're talking about is just is, is just the is the issues and the controversies of tabletop gaming. Is is it perfectly encapsulated in these games here. <laughs> like <laughs> there are you know, there could be lots of units for an army in Warhammer. And you know, six of them are what you take because they're the ones that can be competitive. <laughs> <laughs> like there are there are some units that are playing the game for 20 years over different editions and whatnot that I've just never seen on a tabletop because they've never been good enough to take like they might have cool models but they're just not okay and it sounds like the same thing here you're talking about the national deck building it's like you've got all these options but there's so few are viable in the competitive sense that like why would you ever do it so they only exist to make people who think they're cool or want to play with them, have a bad time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm reaffirming that I think the having the hand-holding by the devs saying, okay, here's the restrictions. And I, I when you're pointing out these things that Steel Division has that Warno doesn't, like the vehicle restrictions, I almost forgot about that, because I like that in Steel Division. I like that you have to plan out the transports, and I like that you got to make be aware of what's going on. And I do like the phase system. I like the you know early, middle, late game stuff. Although I'm not, I guess I'm not missing it in Warno, but I enjoy it when I play Steel Division. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm kind of that same way where I'm, I'm not like, I don't love it enough to demand that they put it back in Warno, but I do feel like it adds, particularly with like in Steel Division, we've got a lot of Soviet battle groups that are, as far as the units go, are very similar, but what they're doing is they're changing availabilities and then you can dramatically change how a a battle group plays depending on if you weight it toward phase a or phase b or phase c um which i think adds a lot to steel division it would probably add a lot to warno too but i i don't think they will ever add it to warno just because there's a lot of war game people who don't like the phase system yeah. and that's fine that's fine um, that's what I, didn't do, I, I don't mind it being different but uh, i guess something i'll mention briefly is ai um because i think Again, we're kind of aligned on this, where we both comp stomp a lot, um, mainly because it's far less stressful than playing PvP. Um, I played a lot of PvP in War Game just because the War Game AI was broken. Like it was not fun or playable. It just kind of 
had infinite resources and it would just spam individual parts of the deck and just drive them at you and it didn't understand anything um and it was just not fun to play against whereas warno uh the ai isn't brilliant but it's it's pretty okay uh to play against and the one of the biggest surprises i've had actually is through early access the ai has improved significantly they've been patching it pretty constantly um which I'm, I find very reassuring because there is often a very large part of any given game community. In fact, in many cases, a silent majority of people who just play comp snops. Um, that's how, how I've always played, for example, Company of Heroes. I always just play against the AI. I don't want to play against people in Company of Heroes as much as I love that game. Um, and I, I think playable AI is really important part of these games that often gets overlooked because usually online, the most vocal parts of the community are the more competitive PvP people um, who often don't really share at all the perspective of people who comp stomp. Uh, even though the people who comp stomp are a very important part of the community, they just tend not to, you don't know, tend to hear from them much on the internet. and. For those people that are out there, Warno's AI is decent to play against, uh, which for a game this complex is pretty impressive, and hopefully they just keep continuing to improve, improve it, because again, over the last six months, it's improved hugely. Um, and in Steel Division, the, the AI is pretty good in Steel Division as well, uh, as far as AI goes. It, my, my bar for AI with these types of games is that it gives, it gives you a reasonable challenge, and it is fun to play against. Um, Whereas with war game, it sometimes it would be a challenge because when you're fighting somebody that has like eight times the resources of you and could just endlessly throw things down the road, it, it's challenging, but it's not fun. <laughs> no, I I feel that like I I bounced off war game pretty hard because after we tried playing online, I'm like this is just too much for me. I thought I'll play the campaign, and yeah, it's just the AI is so stupid that it, it makes it really hard to even like get into playing it. So I, I just dropped War Game. But Steel Division, I, I like playing against the AI. They they seem to put up a good challenge. And it's a it's a believable challenge. Like it's not they don't have to be super intelligent, but it makes sense how things are moving. You don't see anything too stupid happening. And same with Morno. I mean, even a few months ago when I was playing it more heavily, I had no problem with playing against the AI because I thought they were doing a good job. They would actually shell shell things, they would uh you know, push up a support if they're getting an attack, they might like reposition. I thought, hey, that's that's more than enough for a game like this. Yeah, and I think I think it's important, and I'm I'm glad that Eugen is is putting some resources into improving the uh, AI because uh, they never did. Like through all three war game games, the AI was terrible. In fact, in European Escalation, they originally were not going to have AI at all, um, and they were basically the the comp stomp part of the community was like please add ai and they're like okay and they added well that and you basically <laughs> played against it in war game red dragon it didn't really change <laughs> through the three um yeah it was not good and i'm glad with steel division and now with warno they put effort into that um i guess the last thing we'll briefly cover before the conclusion is controversies over unit selection and then the cold war setting um so there's been a very vocal discussion for because they've eugen has bent the rules on some of the time frame so they've added for example the k50 which is out of time frame it is not was not a functional helicopter in 1989 um certainly not combat ready but one division has a couple of them that they added um eugen has a very thin justification of this like march to war you know in their alternate timeline some things were accelerated because there was an increase in tensions, but it's a very thin rationale. It, like the game, because the gameplay reason is they want for gameplay variety, and the K50 is cool, so they wanted to put it in. Um, which I think, for me, honestly, is all the justification they need. Because honestly, as I've gotten older, I care less about that stuff. Um, <laughs> but I, I think, like the the justification they use is extremely thin because it's not really how militaries function it's like you don't get into a, a massive conflict and then you're and then that accelerates 
the introduction of prototypes it's like usually it means you're you're ramping up production of existing equipment that works Mm -hmm. um but there's been controversy about that there's been some issues with uh like or disagreements around the research side of things so as as far as i know it's still mad matt one of the uh, people at eugen who does the research um I, i don't know if he does it alone or if there's anyone else that helps him but he does a lot of the research for Steel Division and Warno. Um, and then sometimes he might get some things wrong. Um, and then some people get very, very angry, <laughs> mainly Americans, because uh, they have like a victimhood complex when it comes to this. Like they, they kind of I don't I don't know if they just only play the US and they they forget that like other nations are missing stuff and have things that are incorrect as well. But where, you know, they didn't get the right type of Humvee or their their infantry doesn't use the AT4 everywhere, so they get really mad. Um, I I guess what's your what's your take on like if you say a game is being set in say 1989 and it's a historical war game, well, how where do you draw the line on them bending rules of reality for gameplay variety reasons? Yes, yeah, so, I mean coming from my usual stock of games, which is where. You know, someone having the wrong Humvee or the wrong tire on the wrong Humvee would set off half the community. <laughs> I mean, personally, it's it's hard because on the one hand, if I'm playing a game set in '89, I'm playing it because I want to. Like, I'm not a super competitive guy, right? So I want to play the war game that is exploring this period and exploring this conflict, and I want to use that to see how the developer is interpreting the sources and interpreting what's going on in this particular conflict. So, like, the interesting thing was, I mean, to have a little aside, when I was playing Combat Mission Cold War with you uh, and a few other friends watching, and the performance of some of the Soviet tanks was amazing, and we were talking about, like, so what's going on here? Why are these particular Soviet tanks being so good? And our friend was looking into, like, the Discord and the research, and, you know, the developer was looking at this particular source from this particular time that said that this tank should be able to do this, and that's in the game. And I thought, okay, that's that's fascinating. That's interesting. Because this is how we are engaging with history in a... You know, even if it's alternate history, right? Even if it's a Cold War, it never was, right? Dealing with these sources, dealing with the information we have, and then trying to create a... Uh, a machine or a system that will take that data and do something with it. And that is just fascinating to me. So I love, even if I don't think it's right, I love just engaging with how developers and, and, you know, researchers are implementing this knowledge from the sources they're getting it from. And then how we can have a discussion about that. That's cool. That's history um, via video games, which I think is very important, you know, seeing this kind of thing and being able to talk about it comes to like alternate history stuff or, or stuff that's like it's out of the time frame but they want it because it's neat I'm not offended by it or anything but I'm not sure like I, I, it's not important but it feels like it's a slippery slope right but when, when are you going to start having the laser beams and crap in our Warno game you know, you know what I mean like the, yeah. if yeah. the justification is, is whatever they want it to be then that framework that they've set up for this universe that they want to experiment in suddenly means a lot less yeah that's kind of my my opinion like when i first saw heard about for example the k50 which is like that was the that was something that was galvanizing um for the uh, a significant part of the community is i looked at it and i was like oh i was a bit disappointed because I, I i wanted them to to stick with their own rules a bit firmer yeah. Um, but then I was like, oh, 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 well, <laughs> and I moved on with my life. Um, there was a sizable amount of the community who were just, and I think still are angry and, and just like, why not this too? Why not this too? Why not that? Um, and honestly, they have a point because yeah, once you start bending rules arbitrarily like that, you don't have rules anymore. Um, like I, I, I would have liked it if they'd stuck a little bit closer. I mean, this is nothing new for Eugen or Wargame generally. They bend the rules even back when, like in Red Dragon, there's lots of stuff that shouldn't technically be in there. They have usually 
often have issues with scale um whereas they they introduce things that are just considered neat even if they're out of scale like uh the mig 31 um which they have in game i mean that's like a soviet homeland defense interceptor but it's operating at low level you know shooting down casts over germany it's like no <laughs> um yeah. or the uh, for i guess a nato example would be the f-117 that they're going to be i can't remember no it's not in yet but they're going to be adding it eventually um where it's out of scale so for people who don't understand the f-117 was not like a cas aircraft in fact it, it was very early first generation stealth um I was talking actually with Tacker, who's recorded stuff, and he really knows his Cold War. Um, and he sent me a whole bunch of sources on the usage of the F-117 and just how it struck me how rigid the the use of the F-117 was because their flight plans had to be methodically laid out ahead of time with the best available knowledge of uh, where enemy radar sites and SAM systems were, uh, simply because the stealth on it was fiddly enough that you couldn't just fly generally toward the direction of the enemy. You had to like very carefully maneuver your way around radars and SAM systems. Um, and ultimately what ends up happening is like, if you miss a SAM system or the enemy is doing something mildly clever, the F-117 becomes significantly more vulnerable because it was very rigid and it was it was really used as like more of strategic level asset and and striking you know really important targets deep inside enemy airspace but of course in war game and then eventually in war no it's like a an adaptable cast aircraft <laughs> that's going to respond to a ba immediate battlefield threat which is just not what it was um but because it's neat it'll end up in war war no as a cast uh, cast aircraft um so th there's stuff like that 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 they bend, and you know, part of me is disappointed, and then I also just kind of get over it. And if the game is fun, like because there's there's enough equipment, there's enough authenticity in there that it's not like everything is broken. Um, like with this K50 thing, if they stick to their rule, and I really hope they do, one division gets two of them. That is the most that will ever be in Warno. And once there's more and more and more and more divisions in the chances of you actually seeing a K-50 are going to be vanishingly small. Um, mm. Which, so it's like, whatever. Um, so that's kind of my my take on it. I'm sure that'll also make somebody angry, but whatever. Um, I mean, at the end of it, it's just, it's it's a game meant for competitive real-time play, right? Like, it's, it's going to have things done to it because the developer wants to keep that multiplayer competitive thing going right and, and mm -hmm. introduction of new units is, is one of the easier ways to do that because you're you don't like revamping the rules or anything but you're just making things you're changing things up a little bit now there's a new thing in the meta where does it fit you know from gameplay wise it makes a lot of sense from the the historian in me is like oh that's too bad yeah. but i mean <laughs> of all the times i i like looking at games as a, a window into our understanding of history i guess the Eugen games were never that high on that list. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like, they're still there. They're still interesting to see how they're engaging with this stuff. It's just, I see why they're doing it. It's no different to me than them adding a, you know, the a Primera Space Marine in Dawn of War after the fact. And it's like, well, at that time when that campaign was happening, those Primera Space Marines weren't, weren't around. <laughs> it's like, well, new units make RTS games fun. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and I guess with that, I guess we can kind of wrap up. Um, I don't think there's anything I really have to say in the conclusion. I don't know if you have anything specific you'd like to add. No, I mean, I just want to say that I'm, I'm I enjoy these games. I enjoy Steel Division and I enjoy Warno. And I'm, I'm coming from War Game, which was something that I just could not get into. If anyone else was in my boat where they thought, oh, this is neat and want to get into it and looks pretty, but just could not handle the rapid fire gameplay of war game then give warno a shot because it, it has a lot of things that are you know meant to give grandpas like me a, a, a shot at it before they <laughs> would keel over from heart attacks from too much clicking 
<laughs> uh, and I'm very much uh, in that boat as well. It is still, just keep in mind, it is still early access. There's still a lot of content to be added, bugs to be ironed out and balance to be worked out. If you're okay with that, definitely look into it. I think it's a, a fantastic game. I know I'm going to be playing it probably for years to come. Um, and I guess with that, um, we'll see you next time. Bye. Yeah, bye. Thanks for having me.
nicht bereit. Bewegung, aber erhöhte Aufmerksamkeit. Dran, drauf, drüber. Bewegung, Sie sind hier nicht auf der Fritz Heckert. Dieser Heckmotor muss überprüft werden.
Gepäckträger. Feind gesichtet. Gefechtsbereitschaft herstellen. Sunny! Warten auf neue Befehle, Kommandant. Fertig machen zum Sprung. Wir greifen gleich an. Ah, es hat mich erwischt. Verdammt, es hat mich erwischt. Zu den Diensten. Gehen wir das Lagebild vernichten. Rückwärts, Marsch. Ah, es hat mich erwischt. Verdammt, es hat mich erwischt. Verdammt, Fahrer, rückwärts, Marsch. Der Tank wird auch positioniert. Sie sind hier nicht auf der Fritz Heckert. Verdammt! Fahrer! 